How to Install Jenkins on OpenSUSE 15.4. Here's today's starting point. I have a fresh installation of OpenSUSE 15.4. I have done a couple of items to this box. The first thing is that I installed Vim. I've also run a zipper update to completely update the box. Down in the description of this video is a link to a gist that has all of the commands and documentation that we're going to be looking at. Now, the first thing that we're going to need before we install Jenkins is we need a version of Java. I want to install the Tamarin version of Java, specifically Java 17. So let's go over to the documentation for the Tamarin installation. We've already dropped down to the section for OpenSUSE. Two steps that we need to do. The first thing that we need to do is we need to install the RPM repo. And then secondly, we will install Tamarin 17 JDK. Let's go back over to the shell. And I'm already root on this box just to make things simpler to install. I'm going to install the RPM repo. And then secondly, we're going to say zipper install Tamarin 17 JDK. Now at this point, we need to either trust always or just temporarily for this key. In my case, I'm going to say always. Now at this point, it's saying, are you sure you want to go ahead and install these packages? In my case, I want to go ahead and say yes. Now that the installation is completed, let's type java space dash version to make sure it installed. And we see that it's OpenJDK version 17.0.6. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and install Jenkins. So let's go ahead and clear this out. And let's go over to the Jenkins documentation. We're on the download page for Jenkins. We're going to install the stable version. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to click on the OpenSUSE link that's here under the stable side. And now we can see basically we need to do the same thing, except this time it's just for Jenkins. We're going to add the repository for Jenkins. We can skip this step for installing Java because we just finished installing Java for ourselves. And then we'll say zipper install Jenkins. So first off, let's go ahead and copy our add repo. Let's go back over to the shell. Let's paste this in. Now, much like what we saw for the Java installation, we know that we're probably going to be asked for a key. So let's go back over here. Let's copy zipper install Jenkins. We'll paste that in. We can see here that it's asking, do you want to accept this key? In our case, the answer is always. And then yes, I want to go ahead and install Jenkins. So let's first check and see if Jenkins is already running after the install. We'll just use PS to check that. So we'll say PS auxww, and I'm going to grep for Java. At this point, we don't see a Java process running. So let's go ahead and start our Jenkins process. So we'll say systemctl start Jenkins. Now that it's started, let's run the PS again. We can see a process is running that's pointing at the Jenkins war file. So we know this is the Jenkins process running. Let's look at this a little bit differently. Let's say systemctl dash dash full status Jenkins. We'll see the output from underneath the C group that looks similar, in fact, exactly the same as the output from our PS call. User bin Java, headless true, jar, Jenkins war, a web root. And then if we scroll right, we'll see the rest of the information with HTTP port at 8080. So we'll scroll back. At this point, we are confident that Jenkins is running. In fact, let's go ahead and check one more thing. Let's go into a browser and just type Jenkins 8080. So we know that we can access our Jenkins controller and we could go ahead and start doing the setup. But thinking back to what our status just said, there are actually a few more parameters that I want to add to the startup process. So let's go ahead and go back over to our console. We'll quit out of the status and let's go ahead and stop our Jenkins process. And then next what we want to do is systemctl edit Jenkins. And what this gives us is the full systemd configuration for this process. There are actually three sections. There's a unit section, a service section, which is right here. And then at the bottom, there is another section called install. But the changes that we want to make are going to be inside of the service section. I'll go back up top and I'm going to paste in, in between these two comments here, anything between here and the comment below is what will become the new contents of the file. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in the changes that I want to make. So I'm saying within the service section, there are two environments that I want to set. One's for Java ops and one is for Jenkins ops. If I look for Java ops, we'll see the one that I'm wanting to put in, but let's find it where it is within the existing configuration. We can see here that it's just headless true. 
If you go back up top, you'll see that I also have headless troop because that is something that I want to keep, but I want to go ahead and add in a prefer IPv4 stack, a Java IO tempter, and also a couple of time zone settings to get me into New York. Now, the second one is Jenkins Ops. I'm wanting to set an argument for plugin root, but if we look inside of the existing configuration, we can see that Jenkins Ops is actually empty. So we're gonna be adding in a new value for Jenkins Ops. Let's go ahead and go back up top one more time. So we are adding into the service section two environments, Java Ops and Jenkins Ops. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's take a look at what's going to happen when we actually run this job. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a status even though the process isn't running. So I'll say status Jenkins. Notice we have loaded and we have active even though it's inactive at the moment. But notice this middle section here, the drop-in. This override comp file is what was just created when we saved the systemctl edit Jenkins. So those two values for Java ops and for Jenkins ops, that's what lives inside of override.conf. Now, one of the dash D parameters that we specified was for java.io.tempter. Jenkins will be able to take care of anything it's aware of, but it can't create that tempter for us. We need to go ahead and pre-create that tempter and set the permissions on it. So let's quit out of status. I'm going to go ahead and do a make dir for var cache Jenkins temp. That's the location that we specified within Java ops. And then since I'm root at the moment, the ownership of the temp directory is for root, but I need to change that over to the process ID that owns that folder, which is in this case Jenkins. So I'm going to say chone dash R Jenkins colon Jenkins var cache Jenkins, just to reown the whole directory structure. One more thing before we get started, I wanted to take a look at system CTL show Jenkins. These are all of the parameters that systemd will be using to control Jenkins. If we look for environment, we're gonna see Jenkins home. We see our Jenkins web root, which we didn't set, but now we're getting into Java ops. Now we can see here, here's our Java headless true. If we go right, we'll see our Java IO tempter. There's our tag for time zone for New York. There's our other tag for New York our Jenkins port of 8080, and then the Jenkins ops, here's our setting for plugin root. So at this point, we're pretty confident that when we start up, our Jenkins process is going to run. But how do we validate that? Well, let's quit out of the show. I'll type clear, and it's one last step. We're gonna say systemd analyze verify Jenkins.service. And since this came back with no errors, in fact, I can say echo dollar sign question mark, we can see that the status code for that command was zero. So we have high confidence that all of the changes that we have made should still allow us to start up the Jenkins service. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say system CTL start Jenkins. Now that it's started, let's go ahead and double check system CTL dash dash full status Jenkins. So here we can see that we're loaded and active, active running. We see our drop in for the configuration changes that we made. And in fact, we can see it in the process running here. We can see our headless tree that we had before, but now we see our prefer IPv4 stack, our tempter. As we scroll right, we'll see our dash D for time zones for both user time zone and for the jelly time zone. We also see at the very end, our configuration for plugin root. So at this point, we're ready to actually go ahead and start setting up our Jenkins controller. Now you'll notice here, there's a little snippet of the log that has the password that we need to start setting up the controller. So I'm gonna copy this password. I'm going to quit out of this. Let's go back over to our controller web page. I'm going to refresh this just to make sure that it's still listening. I'm gonna paste in the password and click on continue. Now I'm presented which way do I want to go? Do I want to install suggested plugins or do I want to select plugins? I always recommend use install suggested plugins. Now, while this is installing, I want to go back over to the console one more time. Let's go ahead and clear this out and let's watch the log for the Jenkins process. So I'm gonna say journal CTL dash U Jenkins and I want to follow the log as it's going out. So I'm gonna say dash F. And what we're gonna see here as the plugins are being installed, we're going to see that as each plugin is downloaded, it's rendered out to the log file. So let's watch this until completion. Now that the plugins have finished installing, let's go ahead and set up our user. Let's go ahead and click on save and finish and then click on start using Jenkins. 
Now, one thing I like to do prior to actually starting to set up jobs or attaching agents is I like to go ahead and do a restart right at this point. That way I can trust that anytime in the future I need to do a restart, I know at one point in time it was able to restart nice and clean. So that's what we want to verify here. So I'm going to go up into the URL and just type in slash restart. It's going to prompt me, are you sure you want to restart Jenkins? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to go ahead and click on yes, but let's go ahead and go back over to our console and let's watch what happens here. We can see that it was rescheduled to start in five seconds. At that point, it stopped the process and then is now restarting the process. Now we can see that it's in theory, fully up and running. If we come back over, we see our login page. We'll go ahead and log in as the user we just created. So now at this point, you can start adding agents and creating jobs. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.